Can I look in the... Yeah, Okay. Right. All right, hi, um, I'm David Maliki. I lead the Net Zero Transport Unit um, at State Government. We're part of the Office of Energy and Climate Change. Yeah, awesome. And in your previous presentation, you mentioned that you guys are setting up infrastructure for electric vehicle charging. Yes. What is that going to look like? Yes, all right, so we've got a number of initiatives around public um, EV charging around New South Wales. So I'll go through them in turn. So the first is a destination charging program. So this is aimed at regional New South Wales, so not metro, but regional New South Wales. And we have rebates, or it's a grant for sites, so destination sites is about 25 categories of businesses and it can be operated by councils or be private businesses um, that are eligible for this rebate. Now, the, that includes caravan parks, uh, hotels and motels, um, uh, cafes, all those visitation sites. Are there any restrictions sites. to like, location of that charge or do they have to be on a publicly accessible... <laughs> Uh, yes, so the, the chargers have to be installed to service two parking spots, so one charger, two parking spots. Whether that's a dual port charger or a single port charger still needs to cover those two spots. Um, and it needs to be publicly accessible, yes, so the public needs to be able to get in there and park on that and spot. And the cost of running the charger? So we cover the cost of the up the upfront cost, so the hardware and the installation. So we cover 75% of the cost of the, the, the charger, the EVSE or the, 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 the unit itself up to four per site. We also cover um, the installation costs, up to 75% of the installation costs, but we cap that at $1,000 per charger. Yes. So we also fund up to two years worth of a software subscription for that charge. So if you install four chargers at a site, at a hotel or whatever, and you need that software subscription on top of that to manage those charges, we fund 50% of that for two years. Yes, and so we're in, we think that's a $20 million program and we think that we'll be able to support 3,500 or more charges across regional New South Wales. It's currently open, we run it in funding rounds. The first round is open until the 23rd of September, so many more months from today. Okay. Um, and there's a, um, an online bidding platform. So you just come in, you register, provide the evidence we require. You know, we need photos of the parking spots, we need a quote from an installer, and we also have a, um, a, 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 an approved product list. So we worked with the Electric Vehicle Council to create a list of um, chargers that met minimum standards. So yeah, networkability. So can't put in any, like, can't put in any old charger? Okay, yes. Cool, yeah. You must use a charger off that list, but yeah. it's a good list. It's a long list. And um, we're agnostic about the charger you put in at your site. We don't mind, so long as it's off that list. Yep. Um, and, it, and all of those charges meet min our minimum specifications. And if they put the application in and you said it's September, <laughs> when does the funding get released? Yes. So. Uh, the application comes in after, within six weeks we notify uh, applicants of success or otherwise and then they have four months to install their chargers. You mentioned yes. that you've got a list of preferred vendors for the chargers. Yes. Do you have a list of like exclusive installers as well that have to install? No, we haven't gone to the inst installation side. So um, it can be a local electrician, or an electrical contractor can yeah, okay. also do this work. And also some of these suppliers are actually do develop, they have turnkey solutions. And what capacity are you looking into like the people running the infrastructure after it's installed? Yes, so uh, look, we have commitments around, so the responsibility for managing those charges is on the site. Now these sites don't, people maybe have never heard of EV charging before, <laughs> it's their first experience with it, but it's their responsibility um, to manage those charges. And so the caravan park puts the charges in, yes. <coughs> and then 12 months they get, the, they're not happy with the cost of running it, do they get their money back? No. No, so the, the operation and the cost of is operations a, is, is there on a the... time frame that you have to run it for? <clears throat> no, not really. I mean, we, we, but we expect the benefits to be large and, yeah, and them are. to be... And they are, right? And so we think that sites aren't going to scrap charges immediately, right? They have value and they, they'll, they have value not in, in, in and of themselves, but in the, um, the visitor attraction that they'll have. Is there the any site. avenue for any of these like wineries and stuff that have already put them in to claim new... Yes, so the, the setting is that if you have one charger, you can apply, but if you have any more than one charger, you can't apply because we want new chargers in new locations. Okay, so for existing um, locations, if you have one or less, you're able to apply. Absolutely. Okay, cool. And then yes. what are you doing for, you've done just destination chargers, what's the uh, fast charging network going to look like? Yes, fast charging network. So it's, it's looking great in New South Wales. So we've mapped out the state. You can go on and look at our master plan. And this master plan shows all of the optimal locations across New South Wales Wales for fast charging infrastructure. Now these are zones, so that's not lo exact locations, but they're zones. 
Does each zone yeah. have a different set of rules, funding? No, so we, um, we, there are about 380 of those zones across New South Wales we've identified, right? They're either in regional bubbles or they're in postcodes. And we looked at about 25 different criteria to identify where these, the right spots were, including substation capacity, traffic volumes, a whole oh, range wow. of things, right? Now, so you're pretty much helping everyone to be guided on where to correct, stick them. Correct, it's guiding in. How industry. are you going to break down local councils that don't understand how to actually run one? Yeah, so the intent is that private businesses, it could be local councils, I should say, can apply into our grants. We have $150 million worth of grants to co-fund these organisations to build, own and operate the fast charging stations. So government won't be operating them, councils probably won't be operating, it'll be charge point operators, it'll be your fuel, existing fuel companies and so on and so forth. And are there any requirements around keeping the network running? Because absolutely, absolutely. So we have really firm set reliability um, requirements uh, in terms of uptime and we've looked internationally at what the different so standards are. They have, have to yes, to that's right. That's and right. What is that figure? That's like? right. Look, it's over ninety-eight percent. I don't have the exact number okay, so in mind. Okay, you must have an online charge ninety-eight percent of the time. That's right. Availability. Yeah. Okay. That's yes. Which be is a which is um yeah. especially if it's in a regional area. Perhaps, but yeah. yes, yes, and you know, so we we're really looking for applicants that have the capability to yep. both fund. You know, these are these are big charging stations of a million dollars plus and they're high capacity, 350 kilowatt charges and so forth. And, okay, so the DC fast charging requirements are 350 kilowatt charges? Yes, so two, two bays to service 350 kilowatts and two bays to service 175 for specification. Oh, so you're that's the minimum. each one of these government funded locations must have four charges? Wow, okay, that's or at a least real a, estate to get or at least a, access to. Uh, yeah, yes and no. I mean, yeah. there's lots of uh, organisations. and all that, they're all over that. Um, yeah, and what is the breakdown of the funding for the DC files, files charges? Breakdown in terms of percentages? Yeah, or, what you we have a cap of 50% of that funding. You're going to um, pay 50% of the construction costs. Construction costs, it also incorporates if uh, in, a, in a voluntary capacity, so it's not... Um, it's not mandatory, but to include battery storage um, at those sites as well, or solar, on-site solar. And we think that's, that's important. It's not, impo it's not necessary at every single site, but it's important because at times there's, um, uh, having a battery allows that 100%. grid connection and so forth. Yeah, yeah. And you say you're covering 50% of the cost. Is it capped at a dollar amount? Uh, yes, it's capped at $490,000 per charging station. That's per right. charging station per or charging, charging site? Charging station. So we're looking to construct 250 charging stations right across New South Wales. And the, that, that number comes from a commitment to have a charging station, one of the government funded ones, no, including the ones that are already in existence, every 100 kilometres across all of our highways and major roads, about 2,000 kilometres of highways. Um, as well as in metropolitan areas. So every five kilometres, you'll never be further than five but you're k's from one of these stations. Per charging site or per charging station? <coughs> per charging station. So when we say station, so we mean. Stations in no, your plan? we talk about. So a char it's just jargon, right? Okay, so we yeah. what, what, what we call a what we call a station yeah. is like you know a petrol station. Imagine, right? Okay, like with seven so bouses. So it's, it's a side or a station. Yeah. Okay, cool. Each of those stations will have four charges, yes. or four charging bays, or four charging yeah, no, stalls, whatever that's language. That's totally amazing. And yes. so outside of the DC fast charges and the uh, destination yes. charges, what other programs are you currently yes. running? Yes, so we've got a couple of new programs coming through next year, early, yes. uh, kind of probably uh, April. Uh, not vehicle to grid so far, although we're looking at, we're doing the background research around what that means and okay. working with our uh, 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 Commonwealth colleagues and other jurisdictions around the standards required both from the on the hardware point of view right like the standards for the bi-directional chargers well there is a lot of shortage of power at the moment yes there's that as well so and the standards for using them and the, and going getting that energy back to grid and all of that kind of stuff so that's in the early days but um so, so my 13 speed. cents of uh, solar feeding tariff that is getting taken away from me is there any other programs around that uh I don't, I don't know at the moment. Yeah, around so the, it's, it's, yeah. the, the programs that you're running are yes. solely around building infrastructure for charging of electric vehicles. For the and, most part. And yeah. helping people to adopt those electric vehicles. Yes, so we have a fleets incentive is another one. So this okay, is not... commercial yes. clients for, you're yes. offering. Okay, what's that like? Okay, so the fleets incentive is for private fleets and local council fleets. Nice. Okay, so now yeah. they need to be operating 10 or more vehicles. Yes. So these are not your just small businesses. They're your fleets of that of that um, size. Yeah, similar businesses that I look after that are all currently looking into EV great, auctions. Great, great. So what this scheme is, it's a reverse auction. 
Now, what a reverse auction is, is you think about your eBay auctions where you're bidding up and then you pay the amount that, you've, that the highest bidder is in. Yeah. This is in reverse. So you say it's about who puts in the cheapest amount per vehicle. <coughs> They're asking the least money from government to make the shift. So we ask participants to do a total cost of ownership calculation and we have fixed parameters so that that's ca comparable across the bidders. From that total cost of ownership ca um, co calculation, they'll have a gap, they'll have a gap. And now we set it at four years and there's a gap, there's, all, there's usually a gap bet between that, that new electric vehicle or the internal combustion engine vehicle they would have purchased otherwise. It might be $3,000, $10,000, $20,000. It depends on yes. that vehicle and what it's doing. Now we cover part of that gap. So if you come up with a gap of $5,000, you can so bid in taking, for up to $5,000. You're saying that you're gonna take the existing gas fleet that they have, compare that to the electric fleet, and then look at the gap, and yes. you're, gonna, you're going to provide an incentive with that gap money. Correct. And we, that incentive yes. is going to be put through to you at a percentage, and whoever's the lowest bidder of that is going to receive that funding. Yes, so we have the round we currently have out in markets, round two, so it's a $15 million round, and what happens is that bidders will all bid in and bid in at their different prices, yep. and it creates a bid stack and if that bid stack is bids public? No. So, so you it's can't within a, see whether you're ahead of the game or It's competitive. It. It's yeah, competitive wow. and it's a reverse auction. Just, you know, so... Do you have um, from the first round examples of like people that have been successful so that you can yes. then work that out? Yes. So, uh, look, we're not disclosing the price um, okay. and the incentive because that will um, affect future rounds. But you must... Do, so do you, just, do you disclose the total funding available? Yes. Okay. So then you can work backwards from that. You, you could. Yeah. Okay. Uh, although there's, you know, we also support each vehicle with f a four hundred dollars to purchase a smart charger so most of oh, those nice. applicants so, will so pick up sense, so even if you lose in the bidding war for the vehicles you have to get the vehicle if you get the vehicle you can get that four hundred dollars okay, is there any commercial charger. charging offers or anything like that that you're offering no. okay cool and all right well that's an interesting program yes it's, do you get multiple attempts at winning you can bid in per round like every okay. round you can bid in again if you're unsuccessful and what if your in the previous round existing? Yes, that's fine. Okay, no worries. Yeah. The idea is to shift existing fleets over to EVs, yeah, exactly nice. right. Yeah. All right. So that's a really great one. It's a $105 million initiative um, uh, over four years. So round two, we'll have about six or seven rounds over time. Um, and then probably seven the, rounds, okay. Yeah, probably right. six or seven. Yeah. Uh, and the final in, uh, initiatives I'll talk about are around um, curbside charging. No, so these are coming next year. Probably yes. April, May next year. So you're going to put smart lights on the street. Yeah, a bunch of, we've got to work it out and do program design and figure out what's required around, the, around this, what best practice is, what the examples are. But we're going to get 500 curbside chargers out there over the next four years. Yep. And we're going to, in lots of different configurations, we'll work with local council of councils and other authorities to make sure that um, we've got those, you know, the, the approvals process better down. And then these different examples which other councils can follow and do it a bit in a bit more broad scale. Do you think that um, there should be some government control around the fees associated with these uh, electric vehicle services, like charging? Oh, uh, look, because yeah. like Tesla's fee, you know, you go to it, you know, you got EVSC, you got all these different companies, and their fees are all over the place. And I get it that they've got different costs, but some of them yep. are astronomical. Yeah. You know, so how do you manage that? And is there, you know, like you've got the energy ombudsman for like all of market rates for electricity. Is there no play on that? And should the government get involved? In yeah, look, cost? governments are looking at this kind of thing around yeah. pricing. It's a very new market, yeah. as you know, like, in, and it's a growing market and the market's self-regulating itself. So, you know, you see bands, you don't see... There's some expensive pricing, but there's not outrageous pricing at the moment. There's yeah, no, correct. there's no three dollars per kilowatt hour or but you whatever. You know how like they, you're buying <coughs> energy across states and all of that, and it is a commodity. Is there not a place for that, like a benchmark price, like all the service stations have to? Yeah, yeah. Look, know. and I think regulators are, are starting to think about it, and they're going to look at that and do their studies and work out where that where that pricing intervention and standards need and to be set. And what do you see with vehicle taxing and road user taxing? Yes. And, stuff like yes, that. What yes. is, what's happening there? So in New South Wales, um, as part of the electric vehicle strategy, we've cr there will be a road user charge on electric vehicles, but from mid-2027, so July 2027. And is that going to affect existing EVs that are out there, or is this for new uh, EVs? It's for new EVs, purchased okay. from, I think, September 2021, I think is my understanding yeah, of cool. the threshold there. Well, lucky um, me, I missed that. That's yes, good. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, well, that, yes. I mean, you've got to pay for the road, I we guess. We have to pay for the roads. You know, so that's right. There's no way. And it's not. a balancing thing, right? Like, so fuel excess will reduce. That's what pays for our roads, maintaining and building them. And yeah. we need to replace that. And it's a, and the vehicles are using the road. So it's a sensible thing to do. But in New South Wales, we, um, 
Uh, <coughs> we think it's critically important to increase uptake, create the enabling up infrastructure, have EVs as the norm. So, uh, you know, there's another trigger which is 30% of si new sales being electric vehicles. It will start then or mid 2027. Oh, so you're saying that the tax will trigger at that point when the vehicle saturation is that? 30% or mid 2027. Okay, exactly cool. right. Well, there's at least a yes. line in the sense. There is, and other states have been following that same time frame. So, West Australia have the same time frame, South Australia have the same time frame. So, it's been taken up nationally, which is great. I mean, state by state, but still, it's been consistent now around that 2027 start date. So, We've got time to get EVs becoming um, the norm.